How's it going guys? Welcome to the Rogue Admiral. And what's that I hear you ask? Admiral, what is the fate of Martok after the Dominion War? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's find out. Let's start where I always like to start. In the final episode of Deep Space Nine, the Dominion are defeated and the Alpha Quadrant powers are victorious. In the eyes of the Klingons, they would say they are victorious. And led by their new battle-hardened Chancellor, Martok himself. There would be mass celebrations, drinking blood wine, and singing Yajar ke ho, Yajar ke ho, Yajar ke ho, Badak du mo, Shojar du ro, Yajar ke ho. Anyway, so they'd be singing. It would look like things are pretty rosy. Martok has good relations with the United Federation of Planets. He's a strong leader, he's got the loyalty of the majority of the soldiers, he has his own fleet. It's looking pretty good. The Klingon Empire looks ripe for a resurgence. However, as we know, the Klingon Empire is not a healthy beast whatsoever. I like to think of the Klingon Empire post-Dominion War. I like the Roman Empire in the 3rd century. It's inside, it's fractured, there is corruption. And what the dangerous thing is, the, the Dominion War would create not just Martok, but several other generals from noble houses who would have lots of wealth and a fleet of their own, and they would be competing for power and the chancellorship. They could see an opportunity that Martok, even though he is a strong leader, he stands on a bed of sand, he gained the chancellorship, by the Federation, a Federation agent, Worf, assassinating Garon. With this in mind, it's easy to see how the, the great houses of the Klingon Empire may scheme and accuse Garon of being a Federation agent himself. A Federation puppet. And I'm sure across the Gulf of Space, our good friends the Romulans would fund these theories. It would fund whoever would support them. The Romulan Empire is in a very good position post-Dominion War, and what they do not want is to come up against rivals that they could easily put down. The Klingon resurgence, the day the Dominion War ended, is in its infancy, and the Romulans would not let it rise whatsoever. They would do everything in their power to crush them by deceit and by guile. So those ambitious Klingon houses would find a very good friend a very good secret friend, a very good secret friend with lots of money in the Romulans. The Federation fanboys always say as well, they always say, oh, in the future after the Dominion War, the, uh, the Klingons would always eventually join the Federation and be welcomed in with open arms just like the Cardassians. Now why on earth would the Romulans ever, ever allow that to happen? The Romulans aren't going to sit back and allow the, the, the new Cardassian state to be swallowed by the Federation and especially the Klingon, the entirety of the Klingon Empire to be swallowed by the Federation, Romulans would be surrounded on all sides. They, they would in fact be defeated. Defeated before the battle's even begun. There is no way whatsoever, ever, ever, they would allow the Klingons to fall in the hands of the Federation. Nor would the Romulans allow the Klingons to be ruled by someone like Martok, who has such sympathies for the Federation as well. A Federation sympathizer. That's probably what the Great Houses would say. So when you look at the ambition of the Great Houses and of the political situation of the Romulans, there is only one fate for Martok. And that is the question which I start at the beginning. What is the fate of Chancellor Martok? And it's, it's very simple. Chancellor Martok is going to be assassinated very, very soon. Possibly by Romulan agents probably by the Great Houses, a house akin to the House of Duras, something like that. Once Martok is dead, there will be a civil war. The factions would fight against each other with their own fleets until one of them is supreme, and that supreme house will be the one who is backed and funded by the Romulans. I can imagine cloaked warbirds entering Klingon space on the side of the pro-Romulan faction, and annihilating, annihilating, you know, open warfare, annihilating any house that stands against them until there is only one house. That house is so stupid, they will believe that, that they are now the Chancellor Emperor 
and they did it all on their own and the Romulans were just some quiet convenient allies they probably won't see the bigger picture that they themselves are Romulan puppets. The Klingons as a Romulan puppet state is something the Romulans have wanted since that episode of TNG Redemption. But of course the Federation's going to find out they're not going to stand for that they're not just going to sit back and let the Klingon Empire be be ruled by the Romulans. So they're going to fund the opposite houses. They're, they're going to fund insurgencies. They're going to fund separatist movements. After a period of Romulan puppetry, I think a second civil war will break out and what we will see is the balkanization of the Klingon Empire. Certain regions will be ruled by one house, other regions ruled by another. I think it will be a North-South Korea type of system, but perhaps with more than two, you know, North, South and East and West cut up and divided. Some uh, minor minor nations breaking free of Klingon hold. The fate of the Klingon Empire is definitely, definitely not a happy one. And I'm sorry to bring such bad news to all you Klingon fanboys out there. For the Dominion War has vast and devastating consequences. And I've really enjoyed making this little episode. I've had a good time. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all later. Ciao for now.